This is the summer, and we are here at the last Geek Dinner of the Summer with Steve Eves of Volt Server. Steve, what the heck is a Volt Server? <laughs> is it like a file server? Volt Server is our company name. We make boxes that digitize electricity. Okay, you digitize electricity. How is electricity not already digital? Right now, electricity is an analog format. It's an analog the format. The world functions on analog format. So I got energy comes into my house, mm -hmm. and I don't know, is it like AC? And it's like, is it like a sine wave? Is it a pair of sine waves? Or? It comes in as a sine wave. Okay. But it, it, the equivalent would be, it's sort of like water flowing into your house. Yep. AC means that the water is flowing back and forth over time. Okay. In and out and in and out. And that creates work, right? And that work, you can turn on lights or power refrigerators. Microwave popcorn. That's right. Got it. Got it. All right. Now, how are you, how are you? Your electricity is getting delivered. It's not. It's not AC. It's what is it? Little bursts or? That's a good way to put it. Little it bursts. A bunch of little bursts. So the uh, we use the analogy of breaking the water up into very small droplets, and so we transfer the water into discrete components. And that's why we call it digital because digital things are quantized yep. into discrete components. So so if I like if I had an oscilloscope and I plugged it into your thing. I wouldn't see the same thing I see coming out of like a DC power source or something like that. Yeah, that's true. You, it would look almost like DC, yeah. but you would see little wiggly things on your scope that was in between flat lines. And those little wiggly areas are where we've actually isolated the electrical lines. Yep. And we're analyzing and sending data. And now you're using wires that are traditionally used for data. We use the same wires, and um, a lot of times we like to use Cat5 or Ethernet cable because it's very inexpensive and it's all over the place. And so normally a Cat5 cable under analog power carries about 25 watts, and under digital format we're able to put about 2400 or 2.4 kilowatts on that same line. Now how does that, how does that wire not catch on fire when you do that? What we do is when you increase the voltage of the electricity, you need less electrical current. And so you can transfer more power when you increase the voltage. Now normally you wouldn't be able to do that because it's not safe in analog format. Yeah. But by converting it to digital format where each little piece is verified, we can tell whether your vacuum cleaner is drawing the power or whether it went into a person or into a short circuit or some sort of bad connection. All of that is verified in the digital transfer. Wow, all right, so you've got hardware at both ends. You can say, this is where I want this power to go. You can determine whether it got there. That's right. And, and I could wire my house with this right now if I wanted to. Yeah, you would. You could wire it on your own or we could wire it into this building. Yeah, and I could do that myself since it's Cat5, right? That's right. So what are the big applications that you see for this? Um, our initial applications are mobility networks, so uh, as the mobile data world has expanded rapidly, each one of those little bits that you're transferring on your cell phone requires a finite amount of power, and that's expanding extremely quickly. It's created its own sort of small microgrid of powering all over the place, and yep. we make that very inexpensive for the phone company to run. Right, right. And what about uh, solar power systems? Can I plug a solar panel right into your... Yeah, we have a program going on now with the Department of Energy where we're contracted to embed the packet energy transfer. That's our need for digital power. We embed it into a solar panel. And it's part of a plug-and-play program oh, wow. the Department of Energy is doing so that people could go to, say, Home Depot and buy panels and put them up on their roof and install it safely, even at very large so, power levels. And so... Can I plug stuff directly into that, or do I still need a battery to sort of store it all? I mean, can I have one of your fancy solar panels and plug it into a light bulb? 
Usually what you do is you bring that power from the panel back into another box in your basement or garage and yep. you pull an inverter and that creates it, turns it back into AC to use yep. in the house. Um, so we reside, our electronics reside as part of that inverter system or we can put what we call a digital power routing device inside the house that distributes our digital power throughout the whole house if you run the Cat5 yep. that you're talking about. That's really easy. It seems great. Um, and, and you've been doing this for how long? We have been, we received our first funding, significant funding, um, about a year ago. And, um, and, and you do that right here in Rhode Island, East, East Greenwich? Greenwich? All right, great. And where do you guys see yourself being in about a year? Um, in a year we'll be still doing mobility data, mobility markets. But we'll also be doing solid state lighting. We'll be uh, we have a project in Colorado to enable um, an eco village, which is really a very large installation, a 6,000 acre installation, which will be under digital power format. Um, we're also doing um, lighting systems, so you'll start seeing us around first in, in the industrial world, and then probably in buildings and renewable energy. And then everywhere. Well, Steve, thanks so much for closing out the last Geek Dinner of the right, Summer. I appreciate it. I love doing it.